Hey, what's up? It's Alfonso and Ask the Fonz. Today, I'm excited to continue part four of Richard and Colleen Halsey's interview in my behind the scenes edit series. Before we begin, if you love hearing about film editing and how to break into the industry, please subscribe so I can reach a wider audience to share all of my information. In this video, Richard and Colleen will be talking about their experiences working on their films and dealing with all the politics of the industry. So without further ado, here's part four of Richard and Colleen Halsey's interview. Which brings me to the fact that um, I'm gonna give you some clips. And one of the clips I wanna give you from down out in Beverly Hills is a scene where Nick Nolte trains the dog how to eat the dog food. Also, we should do the, the, the talking heads uh, yeah. Pete. We, uh, I was a big Talking Heads fan, mm -hmm. still am. and uh, I introduced Talking Heads to Richard. We went and saw the movie, uh, and so uh, I found uh, this Talking Heads song, and I said, Richard, it's going to be perfect for the movie. Yeah, Once in a Lifetime. It opens, it opens up the movie and closes the movie, David Byrne. Oh. It, 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 it's yeah. down and out, down and out was a big hit for Disney because Disney had not, they only had the, uh, um, wh what's his name's movie? The Mermaid movie. Uh, Splash. Splash. Mm. Ron Howard's movie, Splash. But Down and Out was a big, big hit with Disney. And a great soundtrack. It, it won all these awards for the soundtrack. And then we hired Andy Summers. Well, I, I hired Andy Summers to do the soundtrack. But then we also had great source cues. Randy Newman, I Love L.A. Yeah, Once in a Lifetime, David Byrne. Then we had Little Richard. With Little Richard wrote an original song for the movie. It, 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 yeah, and, and won all these soundtrack awards. And also, it was the last year that they gave the Patsy Award. The Patsy Award is like the Academy Award for animals. <laughs> And the two, the two, there were two dogs in the movie that played one. Mike and Dave. Yeah, Mike, Mikey and Nikki, or whatever they were. I think they were those Dave. Australian shepherds. And Clint, Clint, um, Clint, I forget Clint's last name, was a dog trainer. There was, yeah, it, it was great. So we're. we're Matisse. Yeah, Matisse was the dog. Very hysterical movie. I really liked uh, So I Married You Can Axe Murder. So I Married an Axe Murder, actually. Um, were there any some sto funny stories? I'll, I'll, I'll let Colleen tell this story. This is an amazing story of editors coming to the forefront, coming up with ideas for reshoots. Yeah. And it was major. I'll let Colleen tell that story. So when we... When you read the script, um, Axe Murder originally was Mike Myers' character was always too shy to get up on stage. He had all this things that he written, but you could never get him to perform. That was his character. And I saw that right away as a problem because people want to see Mike Myers perform. Yeah, I, I, yeah they're talking about him being a poet. And, they, and he, we, he never, never, we never saw him perform or do anything. Yeah, it was good. It doesn't work. So, well, we do the movie. Uh, we have our first cut. Mike comes to the first cut, and it's like his face is gray. I mean, he's so, he knows it's not working. And so I asked Richard if I could give Mike the suggestion, a suggestion. And he said, so we had lunch with him, with Tommy, the director. And I spoke up and I said, Mike, you know, it's if we shot some scenes of you performing, I think that's going to fix the movie. And he says, "Well, I, I, I don't, I, I don't really do poetry. I don't like doing poetry. It's not me." Mm -hmm. And I said, "Well, I had a, a really hip poet friend named Michael Lally, a very famous poet, and." Michael gave us some of his. Uh, it was like it was rap, like, rap, it was rap, sort of like rap poetry. Okay. And uh, so we played some of his 
uh, at that time it was on a cassette, played some of it, gave it to Mike. Mike went home and he went home and he wrote the woman scene and yeah. uh, well basically we they shot three scenes. They started the movie. Woman. Yeah, with with with, woman. with, with uh, started started the movie, then w another scene in the middle of the picture, woman, woman. And then we did a bunch of pickup shots for the chase at the end of the movie. Yeah. And that final wrap up of him doing. So there was like it was a it was a three and a half million dollar yeah. Re yeah. reshoot. <laughs> it was a big reshoot, but it helped it saved the movie. Yeah, well, yeah. It, yeah the, the movie became a huge hit in Canada and then became like a cult film. Interesting. <laughs> it, it's a funny it's a funny movie. I saw it. Yeah, it is a funny movie. And is it true that they they, they kind of got inspired by that movie uh, when they made Austin Powers, and using sort of the. I, and I think that was the Austin Powers thing was just Mike Myers. That was his. That was brilliant what he did with that movie. Mm -hmm. He's a very funny, clever guy. Yeah. My next question, I guess, is um. So dealing with a lot of these, uh, I guess conflicts or ideas that come up during the script, how do you sort of manage, you know, yourself and how to deal with tough personalities and how to develop a thick skin or kind of speak up when you find something that's going to inevitably change the film? That goes to rule number three, always tell the truth. Always tell the truth. But sometimes the you truth can't, is sometimes hard. you just can't yeah, win. We, we, we've now done this so much. We have pulled so many pictures together. Just tell the truth. Just tell the truth. Just tell yeah, the but truth. he's, I think Alphonse is also touching on personalities, you know, like sometimes yeah, you just it's, it's, you get a bad, a bad one. Some, edit, some editors don't like the assistant speaking up. We, Colleen and I have never been that way. If you've got a good idea, I want to hear it. Hmm. So it's it's a del it's a very well, delicate, that's, yeah, very but you want to you want to do it in a way that uh, yeah, uh, pay for everyone. Yeah, you, you don't it, want it's tricky. Sometimes you, you know if you're working, you're um, and the, you're hearing from the director and the producer, and then your assistant pipes in. That can be a problem at times because it's just like I'm getting too much information here. Right. But right. I'm not saying if you want to make a contribution, uh, you would do it afterwards or later. Or on. or take a, take a, you step aside and say, hey, yeah. yeah, can I? And that's what I sort of talked about about reading the room and understanding when it's appropriate yeah. to speak up and when it's appropriate to voice your opinions because that and most of the time it's okay. Right. Uh, I would say most of the time, but sometimes it's, you know. No, sometimes you have to keep your mouth shut. Yeah. It's a very, it's a very delicate situation. And I think that it, you have to have common sense with that. I mean, right. You kind of just have and, to. You know, it's like, uh, I worked on the Mighty Duck movie and it was the hardest movie uh, uh, emotionally and mentally for me here you i thought i'm walking in i'm doing a disney kids movie mm -hmm. it's be, i mean it was just you know it was my first uh studio picture on my own i had done a really good film uh what was uh, the film i did prior to that with ann hache and josh charles brian gordon's picture oh that was a good movie yeah yeah anyway uh so i got this disney movie and it was on location, I get on location, and the director didn't want to hire me. Oh, he, wow. wanted, he wanted someone else, but Disney wanted me, and the producer wanted me. So the director, I just couldn't win with him because yeah. he was not going to like me no matter how good my work was, no matter what I did, he didn't get his way he didn't get his guy. So uh, he resented that. Yeah, you were already in a bad situation from being- Also, very, I mean, I, it was my first Avid show too. So oh. there was a lot of pressure there um, because it was one of the Disney's first Avid shows. Um, and so there was a lot of 
people didn't know exactly what was going on. Yeah. And also we were on location, so we weren't um, in, in the same time zone as the labs. And you know, it was, uh, it was a difficult picture. So thank you so much for watching part four of Richard and Colleen Halsey's interview. Please leave a comment on what you thought, and if you have any questions on anything Richard and Colleen brought up, I'll be happy to answer them. Lastly, if you're interested on a one-on-one -on -one mentorship, please visit my website to schedule an appointment. Anyway, thanks again for watching. I hope you found something useful here. Until next time.